Hello friends, so uh, you may recall that emission inventories are very important in case of when we want to use uh, dispersion modeling. For dispersion modeling emission inventories basically play uh, like input value parameters. So, when we develop emission inventories, we develop uh, emission inventory for each sector. When I say sector, so that means there are several sectors which are responsible for uh, emissions of air pollutants emissions like power sector, agriculture sector or domestic or uh, transport th those kind of things. So, we have already seen how to develop emission inventory for industrial sector, for transportation sector and for agriculture sector. Today we will discuss how to develop emission inventory for residential and commercial sectors. And basically uh, you know you should remember one thing whatever sector it is fundamentally what we do we try to assimilate the activity data ok. Whatever activity is using certain fuels and that fuel consumption you know burning of the fuel is resulting in emissions whether greenhouse gas emissions or air pollutant emissions. So, we need to uh, you know calculate uh, activity based uh, this fuel consumption and then we have to multiply it with the emission factors ok those activity related emission factors. So, that fundamental thing we have to apply in every sector. So, let us see today what we will do to this uh, residential and uh, commercial sector. So, first of all we will uh, look into the introduction basic things like what are the residential sectors, what are the commercial sectors and what kind of emissions are important uh, from perspective of residential sector and commercial sector in India. Then the basic equations because when we are talking about calculation of emissions we are talking about certain equations, certain mathematical relationships right and the procedures or the methodology for estimating the emissions for residential sector or commercial sector. Then to understand the thing we will go for case study uh, for uh, India based case study and then mega city Delhi based case study and then we will conclude. So, when we talk about like residential sector basically uh, this covers like fuel combustion in different activities of domestic nature, household nature like uh, cooking or using fireplaces right whatever we burn for our domestic activities we call it in residential sector. And uh, like household stoves whether it is uh, using you know LPG or uh, you know cow dung different kind of stoves are there depending upon the uh, you know economic uh, background of the household or the family. So, whether it is small or a large household stoves when it is multiplied in you know millions of numbers when we talk about a country. So, the emission becomes very significant otherwise uh, you know first impression we feel that what is that is very small emission from a household activity ok. But when we combine it at the you know city level or state level or country level then this becomes very large amount of emissions of air pollutants and greenhouse gases. So, their contribution is very important when we talk about ambient air quality because these emissions ultimately deteriorate the ambient air quality also the indoor air quality because the kitchen or those kind of household activities first of all they deteriorate the indoor air quality then if there is chimney or exhaust fan etcetera then it goes to the outside means in ambient environment and they again affect the ambient air quality ok. When we talk about commercial sector then basically it covers like uh, cooking, heating, boiler operations, captive power generation in commercial uh, sectors like hotels, restaurants, offices, okay, shopping malls, hospitals, uh, crematorium all those kind of activities are into this uh, commercial sector you can say. Then these facilities are basically available in urban areas and typical urban types of fuel combustion such as gaseous fuels or coal, oil or kerosene are considered when we consider or when we compute the emissions from the commercial sector. And uh, in rural areas basically household related activities are more important otherwise uh, you know in between rural and urban areas there are other activities of commercial nature like uh, you know marriage gardens and uh, resorts etcetera they are also responsible for emissions of pollutants and greenhouse gases. When we talk about pollutants which are emitted from uh, especially residential sector and commercial sector then the major pollutants are like particulate matter, 
देन ब्लैक कार्बन ओके ऑर्गेनिक कार्बन सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड और कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड और ऑक्साइड्स ऑफ नाइट्रोजन देन मीथेन और नॉन मीथेन वोलेटाइल ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड्स और हाइड्रोकार्बन्स ऑल दीज आर द पोल्यूटेंट्स विच आर एमिटेड फ्रॉम बोथ द सेक्टर्स ऑफ रेजिडेंशियल एंड कमर्शियल वेल इफ वी ट्राई टू यू नो हैव ए विजुअल काइंड ऑफ सीनेरियो एट इंडिया लेवल सो देर आर यू नो वन स्टडी ए रिपोर्ट पॉलिसी रिपोर्ट ब्रीफ पॉलिसी रिपोर्ट दिस वॉज यू नो डेवलप्ड बाई कोलेबरेटिव क्लीन एयर पॉलिसी सेंटर इन डेली सो द सेवन मॉडलिंग स्टडीज वर कंपाइल्ड एंड देयर डेटा एंड देयर रेंज ऑफ एमिशंस वर यू नो असेस्ड एंड इट वॉज नॉन दैट यू नो दिस रेजिडेंशियल एंड कमर्शियल सेक्टर इन टोटल बोथ दीज सेक्टर्स आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर ट्वेंटी टू टू फिफ्टी टू परसेंट ऑफ एम्बियंट पी एम टू पॉइंट फाइव एक्सपोजर टू द पब्लिक सो दिस इज ए वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट यू नो रेंज और द प्रपोर्शन इफ यू लुक इन टू पी एम टू पॉइंट फाइव बिकॉज पी एम टू पॉइंट फाइव एक्सपोजर इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर सेवरल रेस्पिरेटरी प्रॉब्लम्स टू द पीपल सो हेल्थ इम्पैक्ट्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन दैट रेस्पेक्ट सो यू कैन सी हियर यू नो दिज एच ए पी मीन्स हाउस होल्ड एयर पोल्यूशन ओके सो दीज आर बेसिकली कंबाइनिंग रेजिडेंशियल एंड कमर्शियल एक्टिविटीज अकॉर्डिंग टू द डेफिनेशन सो दे आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर टू ट्वेंटी टू टू फिफ्टी टू परसेंट ऑफ एम्बियंट पी एम टू पॉइंट फाइव एमिशंस और एक्सपोजर सो दैट्स वेरी हाई रेंज देन वेन वी टॉक अबाउट यू नो दिस एमिशंस फॉर दीज रेजिडेंशियल एंड कमर्शियल सेक्टर और हाउस होल्ड एक्टिविटीज दीज हाउस होल्ड एयर पोल्यूशन सो वेन वी डिवाइड इट इन टू लाइक अदर सेक्टर्स और यू नो एनर्जी इंडस्ट्रीज एंड देन मैनुफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्रीज सो द अदर सेक्टर विच इज बेसिकली दिस कमर्शियल एंड इंस्टीट्यूशनल बिल्डिंग्स रिलेटेड विच वी आर टॉकिंग टू डे अबाउट सो दैट कंट्रीब्यूट्स अराउंड टेन परसेंट ओके एंड विद इन दैट टेन परसेंट बेसिकली इफ यू फर्दर डिवाइड इन टू सब सेक्टर्स सो द कमर्शियल इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल अराउंड थर्टी टू परसेंट एंड द रेजिडेंशियल इज अराउंड सिक्सटी परसेंट सो द रेजिडेंशियल इज डोमिनेटिंग इन दिस पर्टिकुलर अदर सब सेक्टर यू कैन से एंड देन बायोमास बंट इज अराउंड एट परसेंट सो दैट वे द थ्री मेजर कंपोनेंट्स आर ऑफ दैट Uh, basically household related emissions well then we come to the basic equations which are used for estimating residential emissions so as i said you know the fuel consumption we have to estimate first so we need to know what is the activity which is causing the fuel consumption so according to uh, you know that activity we need to first compute the fuel consumption so fc is nothing but fuel consumption for the type j okay fuel type j like lpg then you know biomass or kerosene or whatever you take one particular fuel uh, and see different activities which are using that particular fuel and how much of that fuel is consumed right so that will be the fcj then from that particular uh, you know type of uh, fuel j then we have to see how much pollutant type of i is emitted so different pollutants you know emissions we need to calculate so that emission factor has to be there for that particular emission of pollutant that particular pollutant right so that will give this total multiplication will give the emission of that particular pollutant i from the particular fuel j that is the point and you know then if you go for you know for different fuels then combine you can get the total emission so this is the basic thing which we will see in all kind of activities so you can see the procedure of estimating residential emissions basically first of all you have to calculate the fuel consumption rate so you have to see different activities how much uh, you know that uh, fuel is consumed per day or per month or per year you can take the unit whatever you want to uh, have the time span then the total emissions are calculated by that particular equation which we have seen and the temporal and spatial distribution can also be seen like weekly or monthly or daily that depends means you can really play with that that is not a very uh, complex thing once you calculate uh, you know annual emissions or uh, hourly or daily whatever you can further scale it up in different kind of time span well when we talk about the commercial emissions again similar equation is there so here you can see the fuel consumption from sub sector k so in commercial when we have sub sectors okay in that particular uh, you know sub sector what kind of fuel is there the fuel type j in sub sector k 
So, different subsectors are there, different fuel types are there. So, for each fuel type, for each fuel subsector, you have to compute, and for that, you have to know this emission factor. Multiply it, have this emission for that particular subsector, for that particular fuel, for that particular pollutant, and replicate it for each kind of subsector, for each kind of fuel, for each kind of pollutant. So, that will be you know very exhaustive exercise, but nowadays in the age of computer it is very easy, even you can use a spreadsheet or there are certain models also ready made models, you can write uh, simple uh, you know code or log, uh, logarithmic equations and then you can compute these emissions. Well, again the same procedure first of all for sub sector based uh, you know fuel consumption of the particular fuel type and then calculate the total fuel consumption of that particular subcategory and uh, fuel type and emissions of the pol pollutant and then you can distribute it into according to the desired uh, time span whether weekly or monthly or those kind of so. So, to understand you know it uh, in a better way let us go for the case studies. First case study we will focus upon India level case study. Okay. So, this we have taken from one uh, Terry's report which is the development of specially resolved air pollution emission inventory of India that was developed by Terry. So, this is the report of 2021 it was published. So, we are basing our only domestic or residential sector we are focusing otherwise this report contains all kind of sectors, but in this case study we will focus only on residential sector. Okay. So, you as, as it is shown residential sector, power sector, industry sector, transport sector all these sectors are there and these are the different pollutants which have been considered in this study like PM 10, PM 2.5 carbon monoxide, sulphur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide or oxides of nitrogen, non-methane volatile organic compound that is NMVOC, ammonia all these are there okay. and this is for 2016. This was the year for that this computation was uh, done in this study. Okay. So, in the residential sector basically they have taken both uh, rural and urban area. It is not only the rural, but uh, urban also. So, uh, because residential sector is uh, both ways, but only the fuel type differs in rural area and urban area. In urban area you will find that uh, you know LPG those kind of uh, cleaner fuels are used uh, in much more quantity, whereas in rural areas you will find that uh, you know agriculture waste, cow dung or uh, fuel wood all those kind of fuels are still being used. Although nowadays there are several schemes from the government side they are pushing towards the clean energy ladder, okay. household activities they are providing through Ujwala scheme this LPG connections. So, better situation is uh, coming, but uh, for 2016 we have different data where we have this agricultural activities related uh, you know waste etcetera which people are uh, burning. And when we talk about the rural and urban what is the difference? So, these are the you know basic uh, fundamental yardsticks which are used for judging whether it is rural area or urban area. So, in rural area they assume that uh, more than 75 percent people are engaged in agricultural activities okay. and uh, uh, <coughs> this area is not connecting uh, to a very uh, you know this uh, municipality or uh, you know township related kind of things and those amenities urban amenities are not available. So, that kind of uh, rural related uh, definition is there. Then we go for again basic equation. So, this is like uh, uh, population which is uh, in a district using particular fuel, particular fuel app. So, the population which is using in that district how much population is there. Then this CFS state specific per capita consumption of that particular fuel that data we should have. Then emission factor related to that particular fuel type must be there okay. uh, particular fuel type F and particular pollutant P. Okay. For each pollutant different emission factor is there. So, for each pollutant for each type of fuel we reuse this equation and then we sum it up for all the district for all the fuels or for all the pollutants different pollutants means you will have the matrix for different pollutants PM 10 is emitted so much SO 2 is emitted so much those kind of thing. So, this is the emission of that particular pollutant right. So, this is the equation which we use and the population data here is very important in the sense because there are certain data which are indirectly calculated. For example, household how many uh, you know household activities are there. So, that is again calculated based on certain relationships like here population of 
2016 was estimated based on the population census data of the population of 2011 that was the data available. So, for 2016 it was estimated. So, this is the relationship which was used for you can say projection of the population for 2016. So, this relationship was used right. So, that way uh, you can see uh, this household activities also how many this household in 2016 projected household number in district district level rural and urban in 2016. So, this relationship was used ok. So, again for 2011 data is there we are projecting to 2016 and in this uh, we have to be careful like uh, for example, we want to know how much uh, households are there which are unelectrified ok which are using fuel wood etcetera. So, for that again uh, the direct uh, computation is like you are estimating based on that 2011 data ok un unelectrified and then electrified also. But there is the growth rate according to the you know population this uh, state level change in power surplus those kind of things. So, that data is subtracted to have the adjusted household unelectrified uh, number ok that that correction factor is there you can say otherwise you know that projection will be little bit erroneous. So, this relationship is used for computing the net household numbers which are unelectrified because they will be used for estimating pollution from fuel wood etcetera because kerosene etcetera if there is no like electricity for having energy uh, you know meeting the energy needs then uh, people will have the energy uh, from uh, you know fuel wood or those kind of sources. Similarly, you know this kerosene related uh, consumption calculated number of households using kerosene. So, the same way you have to calculate the adjusted household numbers ok. So, the fuel consumption for LPG again so, numbers are there for different uh, you know years and you have to compute or project for 2016. So, based on the you know data available from, from the secondary literature you have to compute you have to estimate it is very very difficult to get the absolute data. So, it is only the exercise which is estimating. So, there is always some uncertainty, but nevertheless uh, you know uh, we are going for you know baseline uh, data or the data which are available uh, based on certain surveys and those are only the things which we can use for estimate estimation purposes. So, the fuel consumption again L LPG adjusted. So, the similar uh, equation relationship are used uh, for correction factor uh, based on uh, you know 2011 data then projection of 2016 and those growth rates etcetera. Well, similarly fuel wood also you can have this adjusted population of the house uh, fuel wood related consumption. So, you can see this district specific fuel wood in rural areas ok and PPFWH rural areas district specific number of the people using fuel wood. So, those kind of there then CFW is the per capita use of fuel wood in rural area. So, all these parameters must be there which are available from different survey or different reports which we use. Then emission factors what kind of emission factors. So, again they are you know available from different studies which people publish they you know have certain uh, lab based experiments as well as field based experiments and they bring out the numbers that how much a gram of that particular pollutant is emitted when we burn 1 kg of uh, the fuel. Fuel can be different like fuel wood, crop residue, dung cake, coal, kerosene ok <coughs> for cooking, kerosene for uh, this lighting, LPG. So, all these uh, fuel and activities are there. So, for per kg of fuel burnt how much pollutant of PM 10 or PM 2.5, SOX, NOX, CO, NMVOC how much it is emitted per kg. So, that is known as the emission factor you can see all these values are given in this table that is our those are the emission factors for each fuel type for each pollutant type ok. So, these are the gram per kg that is the unit which we will use in those equations for calculation of emissions. When we see this emission inventory for residential sector <coughs> and compare like for PM 10, PM 2.5 then you can see these are the fuel wood FW ok. Fuel wood related emissions are more in comparison to other fuel types like CR is crop residue ok. So, second number is crop residue CDC is dung cake. So, the dung cake is the third one. Then kerosene for uh, lighting you can say third third one 
and this is the fourth one CDC. But there is also you can see different color blue and this uh, orange or yellow. So, that is the for urban, urban related okay? and uh, this blue is for rural. So, always these emissions from uh, you know uh, fuel wood uh, emissions of PM 10 and PM 2.5 are more in case of rural areas in comparison to the urban areas when we are talking about residential sector. Please focus upon we are not talking about industrial sector or other otherwise things will change. Okay. So, the fuel wood consumption in residential sector in rural areas is emitting uh, you know more PM 10 and PM, PM 2.5. Okay. Then uh, this crop residue and kerosene for lighting purpose they are also responsible. When we talk about socks and NOx then again situation is same fuel wood is more responsible for NOx is emitted very high. Okay. Again you can see like here socks is uh, not so much you can see these values. Then when we talk about CO, okay, so CO from fuel wood and NMVOCs are also from fuel wood are very high. So, that means if we can shift the population from fuel wood to better clean fuels like uh, you know LPG etcetera, then these emissions can be reduced. Although NOx emissions uh, may not be reduced because whenever we go for efficient burning, NOx emissions also increase that is very tricky thing. Uh, but uh, at least uh, CO emissions can be significantly reduced and uh, other emissions can also be reduced. So, the conclusion in the case study first we can say that the higher estimations of emissions of PM 2.5 and sulphur, dox sulphur dioxide uh, you know in earlier studies may be attributed to the consideration of increase of LPG uses and simultaneous decrease in biomass uses. So, uh, means increase of PM 2.5 and SO2 may be there, but decrease may be there in CO if we compare. Okay. So, you can see here decrease in kerosene consumption in lighting and cooking okay. and then uh, you know this uh, is responsible uh, for increase in growth in electrification. They are uh, responsible for decrease in PM 2.5 and SO2 emissions. So, those kind of uh, inferences we can make from these kind of studies. Now, we come to the second study case study that is focused on Megasti Delhi. So, this has been taken from one paper which is emissions from domestic sector uh, means this paper is basically for all kind of emission estimations uh, from 1990 to 2000 for Megasti Delhi, but we have taken only domestic sector municipal solid waste and waste water treatment related emissions for the Megasti Delhi. So, that we will present here. So, you can see this Megasti Delhi uh, you know uh, is responsible for any urban area is responsible for uh, several kind of uh, emissions from several sectors whether it is power or transport, uh, domestic, industrial all those. But uh, we are considering only domestic and uh, those uh, sectors like municipal solid waste burning and uh, this waste water treatment those kind of emissions we are focusing in this study. And you can see in uh, domestic also we have considered only the cooking gas, kerosene oil, fuel wood, crop waste and dung cake. right? And this basic equation is the same as I said earlier like fuel how much fuel is consumed uh, of J type right? and from that J type fuel how much emission of I type pollutant is there that is the emission factor. We multiply them we get the emission of that I pollutant and then we go on doing this exercise repeating this exercise for all other pollutants. right? So, uh, you can see uh, this is uh, the equation which we are using very simple equation for municipal solid waste uh, you know burning this is the particular uh, equation where we are applying certain factors like methane correction factor MCF is there. Okay. Then degradable organic carbon DOC, okay. DOCF fraction of DOC disseminate uh, you know dissimulated like 0.77 default we have taken fraction of methane in landfill gas F is there okay. or uh, you know here in particular case we have taken only 0 because we are not recovering any methane. Okay. Then oxidation factor uh, default is 0. So, this is the general equation which we use for emission of methane from municipal solid waste. Okay municipal solid waste. Similarly, uh, you know from waste water treatment if we are going for anaerobic treatment this methane generation is there. So, we have to consider what is the BOD okay, and what is the maximum 
this is a methane producing capacity of the waste water that is BO and MCF methane correction factor again uh, you know there are correction factors depending upon and different uh, parameters or variables, but the default value we are using at 0 0.025. Well, so the emissions from domestic sector when we see you know these emissions are there um, and uh, the CO emissions you know this is increasing and then decreasing from 1997 up to 2000. Otherwise, uh, you can see this uh, NOx emission is increasing uh, continuously. <coughs> NMVOC is also decreasing from 90 uh, you know 7 to 2000 but drastic change is there in co and that basically is related to the decrease in co emissions is basically uh, you know change in the uh, traditional fuels to cooking gas so as i said because when efficient burning occurs in good stoves of the lpg uh, co is very less because directly co2 is emitted more instead of CO, whereas in uh, you know fuel wood etcetera the combustion is not uh, complete and this incomplete combustion is responsible for higher emissions of CO, but in when we go for LPG etcetera or cooking gas then CO becomes less comparatively. Similarly, uh, this NO2 concentration in residential ex, uh, you know area is showing an increase you can see here and that is because as I said. Uh, you know these uh, when we go for from fuel wood to cooking gas so efficient burning so in nit nitrogen is present in air so whenever this uh, you know oxidation happens uh, in an uh, efficient way the nox emissions automatically increases and we have to control it otherwise you know uh, these nox emissions may be responsible for ozone production because of photosynthesis reactions if sunlight is more. So, those things we have to keep in mind when we are uh, considering different kind of emissions. In this case study we can say that the methane was mainly in 80 percent uh, of the methane emitted in Delhi was from the solid waste disposal kind of activity. And this has increased over the last decade by about 40 percent from 133 gigagram in 1992. Uh, in 2000 okay and the trend reflects the population growth in delhi because you know many people comes here and uh, different activities are increased and the waste generation is also increased accordingly so that's why these kind of emissions are also increasing so in overall we can say that uh, you know these residential and commercial sectors may consist of several point sources significantly contributing to total emissions of different kind of pollutants okay and the major emissions uh, from incomplete combustion of the fuels uh, used for cooking or heating purposes like CO etcetera may be there. And the rural population are more exposed to different kind of emissions because they are using fuel wood and uh, you know agriculture waste etcetera, cow dung and highly emitting fuels you can say. So, indoor air quality is poor and they are exposed to high concentrations of pollutants. And it is a good thing that like Indian government is now pushing through different uh, you know policies and programs the cleaner fuels to poor people so that they are not exposed to these high uh, concentration of pollutants. Well, these are the references for additional information. So, thank you for your kind attention and uh, see you in the next lecture. Thanks again.